So the concept of community resilience is all look around looking at the challenges communities face, both economic and social, but also environmental. And building community resilience should actually help them not only just cope with these challenges, but also flourish in the face of them. So the ways of going around that are to do with things like building on the strengths the community's already got. So increasing their skills and knowledge and how to cope with different challenges, but also building the social connections between people that live there so that they've got a greater social network to draw upon in face of different problems. So the outcome of all this should actually be that a community, a resilient community, would not only be more sustainable, but it could also be more sociable and maybe even inspiring as a place to be. So the Good Life Initiative was a practical intervention in a low-income community in York. So it was action research actually, working with the community to try and help them make the best use of the assets that they've got, both the physical and the social resources that the community had. So really trying to make the most of what they've got. And it was funded by the Joseph Rowntree Foundation as part of their Climate Change in Communities programme, with links to the Joseph Rowntree Housing Trust on their emissions and, and energy saving programmes. There were lots of challenges for the good life around building community resilience. In the first phase of the project, we actually worked with the community to identify uh, activities around low carbon lifestyles that they were interested in engaging on. But even though we'd done that, participation started to dwindle. So we had a bit of a rethink, and what we did was we linked to existing groups in the community that we could work with around those issues, like the school, but also did foster the groups that had started in the first phase, so people that were interested in fruit picking and the tree planting to build on those activities that people had already shown some interest. By working with these groups and also the hooks that engage people to start with, we did manage to draw more people in together to try and uh, work on the good life actions around shared action and fostering community cohesion that should help to build community resilience, which was a real focus for the good life. So there were a number of successes from the Good Life Project. I think for me one of the most notable was the Joe Rios event with the whole school in New Year's Week, but also the local community. That was really a, a big event around how their local lifestyles can influence global problems. We also were very successful in the tree planting. We brought a whole big group of people together to actually uh, plant a new woodland in one of the green spaces in the village that will be there for the legacy for the project into the future. The key factor in most of those things was the social connections, so bringing people together to talk about uh, things that were interesting to them, but then start to introduce new ideas, so new ways they could save energy in the home or change their travel behaviour, say. Things that might not have been interesting to them at the start, but because they got hooked on one aspect of the project, they were willing to listen to those other elements. One of the key outcomes, I think, was building those social connections. And that was one of the key learning uh, stages for me from the project, that that can be a real key focus of community resilience, is widening that network of people involved, increasing their knowledge and skills around sustainability issues so that they can take those messages forward into the future.